Good morning. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Praise God. He's given us another opportunity to walk this earth in faith and in obedience to his word and in victory. The victory that is won on Calvary by his son, Jesus Christ. Our father, our creator, sent his son to this earth to reconcile us back to him because he loves us and he does not lose. We thank him for who he is, the great I am. He is all, all that we need. And he is the truth and the light of this existence. There is no truth beyond our Father God. All truth is in Him. And if we want to walk in truth, we need to walk in His Word. Let's pray. Dear Father in Heaven, we come to you this morning blessing your name, praising your name, magnifying your name, your wonderful name, Father, we just praise you, honor you, thank you, thank you, Lord, you're so merciful, you're so tender and forgiving and long-suffering, we thank you, dear Lord, for putting up with us, for suffering our evil hearts and making us new. By the blood and sacrifice of your son, Jesus, we thank you, Lord, and I pray this lesson encourages us to be closer to you so that we might be protected and blessed and loved the way that you desire to love us. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Okay, our daily devotion on this morning is titled, The Son of God Protects. <clears throat> and this is a story out of the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verses 20 through 27. And it says, And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen and their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astoned and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. So for some reason, this devotional stops here in the midst of the story. Okay, verse 25. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. I can tell you that God doesn't change. His word says he doesn't change. If he protected 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in a fiery furnace, he will protect you in your fiery furnace, whatever that may be. Whatever challenge you face, you can depend on the Lord our God to be in there in the midst of what you're going through. He is there. He is everywhere. Trust him. Walk in faith and in victory because your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is alive and well. Okay, today's lesson, section 2B, is titled Perplexed Disciples from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 21 through 24. And it reads, But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, Today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said. But him they saw not. <clears throat> the commentary says, Cleophas and his companion related their hope had been dashed when Jesus was crucified. Let me read that again. Cleophas and his companion related their hope had been dashed when Jesus was crucified. Until the tragedy of his death, they had hoped Jesus might be the anticipated deliverer of Israel. There was a common Jewish expectation that such a deliverer would arise. But it was believed he would be an all-conquering sovereign ruler. He would occupy the throne of David and expel the enemies of Israel. They certainly did not expect that he would redeem Israel by dying. The death of Jesus had given the fatal blow to the hopes of the disciples. And it had now been three days since his crucifixion. This was long enough for them to see the finality of his dying and still short enough for their grief to be unabated. Some of the female disciples of the Lord had told the other disciples an astonishing story. Early that very morning, they had gone to Jesus' tomb, but had found it empty. The distraught women had also seen a vision of angels declaring Jesus was alive. The message of the women was a message of hope, but the other disciples were unable to comprehend it. The two disciples walking to Emmaus exhibited only bewilderment, bewilderment and despondency because it seemed as if the women had broken under the burden of grief. Not only had the women witnessed these strange things, but also certain of the male disciples, um, Peter and John had gone to the tomb and had found the story of the women to be true. The tomb was indeed empty. 
See John chapter 20 verses 1 through 10. This should have been com confirmation to the disciples. But grief can be so deep that it cannot be easily consoled. Amen. Amen. Yes, the resurrection of Christ, even though he declared it to his disciples before he was crucified, their earthly, fleshly minds could not grasp the work that Jesus was doing on earth as it had been declared in heaven. They were thinking earthly. I'm going to stop my study for this day. Um, we'll continue the lesson tomorrow, God willing. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it. And until tomorrow, be blessed. Be blessed and stay close.